Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube and the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. The tune actually starts with an introduction that is played kind of slow rubato, which is to say out of time, and in part makes reference to the A section, the melody that we will play once the rhythm comes in, uh, but is yet a little bit different, so we should of course outline what we're doing. I should mention also that the tune is generally speaking in the key of C minor. Uh, I don't. I say generally speaking because a key of a song to me uh, relates to the tonal center of the song and indeed the song starts in C minor and most uh, the roads as it were in the song lead to the C minor but there are also spots where we play a C major as a temporary tonal center but let's just say that the song is in C minor and with that in mind we're playing the melody notes D and C on the first string, frets 10 and 8, against a C minor chord uh, in the eighth position, a simple bar shape, which is to say you lay your finger across all the strings on the eighth fret. And I play all, this, all the notes, all the strings, except for the fifth string. If I wanted to include the fifth string for some reason, which I'm not doing at this stage, I can also include the G note as the alternative bass note one and five, but that's not happening at this stage, so I'm just barring and then playing the chord with the first melody note, and then while the chord is still ringing, I add that second melody note by releasing either the third or fourth finger, whatever finger you're using. The next chord is an A flat major. with the D. Later on, you're going to see that we're playing this A flat major seven chord to accommodate a different melody. But in this case, the melody is still D and C in this region or this uh, register. So I have to find a position for it up here. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. And I should have mentioned that also in the introduction. 
that there's more, many more ways to do some of the things that I've done in the video than just the ones that I've done. So for example, the one I've done in the video, which I will detail is this, but you could also do in any number of, or this, but the one with the most interesting sound and probably easiest to play is this one right here. And the way I play it is by placing a bar with my first finger across the upper four or five strings, really. I say four or five because the fifth string is going to be played with a different finger, but however your finger extends, that's, that's fine. Uh, the point is that you have to have the upper four strings covered on the 10th fret. And in addition, you'll have also an A flat on the 11th fret, fifth string, as well as a B flat on the second string, 11th fret. So the notes together. And by the way, I, I finger this awkwardly. You might be fingering it this way. And they're totally equal. It doesn't make any difference this way or that. The notes are A flat, C, F, B flat, and D. And you play those five notes. And then with your pinky, you add the C on the second string, 13th fret. While the remainder of the chord is still ringing. So together. If you want to get that little bend that he does, you can maybe do Ah, that was a little hard. Something you can practice maybe if you wanted to. Again, open to interpretation. Third chord in the series is an F minor back in the eighth position. I play a bar again, but I do something a little bit different. Instead of playing the good old F minor seven like this, which would work also, I actually don't play the 5 of the chord, I don't play the C. I play the 4th instead. So it's kind of an 11th sound. So the notes together are F, B flat, what is this, an E flat, and the A flat on the 2nd string, and then on the 1st string, the same two melody notes, D and C. So together. Now we have a big stretch. To play the next movement. What happens here is that up till this point, each chord represented two melody notes, or let's say, let's say it the opposite way. The two melody notes, D and C, for the first three times that I played it, were all covered on the same chord. Here we're splitting it in two. The first one of these, the D melody note, is going to be played again here on the 10th fret, but with this chord. Which to me is some kind of an F add 9 with A in the bass, if you have to call it a name. The notes, most importantly, are A in the bass. Well, we're placing a bar with our first finger on the 5th fret, A in the bass, as well as G, C, and with my second finger I play the F on the 2nd string 6th fret, so, so this in fact is an, some people will call this an A minor flat 6, which doesn't really make sense to me. I think of this as a, an F add 9 with A in the bass, but while doing this, I also have to reach and grab this D on top. And then for the C melody note, I switch to this chord right here, which is a C major or a C7 uh, add nine, I guess, with the seventh with a B flat in the bass. So again, a lot of names which don't really mean anything to me other than I'm trying to communicate it to another person or for that person for that for that purpose it's useful to have some names sometimes but 
showing them what the notes actually are is probably a better way to go. And I have now my first finger it actually stays in the same spot in the fifth fret. But I add three additional notes with these fingers and I have, like I said, B flat in the bass. I still have the, the G under my first finger. I have a D played with my third finger on the third string, seventh fret. I have now the E played under my first finger. And the pinky now plays that C middle D note on top. So th these two together are. So the whole introduction from the top goes like this. And I might even start arpeggiating it a little bit, just to, so it's not really rubato, it's actually played in time. But with some, the time kind of is not solid. Uh, but I am, I might mark some of those 16th notes underneath. Maybe like this. Stage before the rhythm comes in with the first 